So let's answer the biggest question once and for all. Which Dance of the Go controller is the clickiest? Hello and welcome back to the Yamanote. Alex here with a very special video today because what I have here is the brand new Dance of the Go controller produced by Suiki for the Nintendo Switch. And it has been years and years since the last dedicated Dance of the Go controller. So I cannot wait to get into it. So what we are going to do is first uh, do an unboxing of this controller. Then I'm going to take a closer look to the controller, review it. I'm also going to do a little test drive with the controller. And also I'm going to compare this new controller to the older controllers in the series to see how it fares compared to other controllers. So if you are ready, then let's go. Shupat Shinko. Let's take a look first at the box. So as you can see in the front, you have the controller with a design quite similar to the one in the cover of the game. You also have the controller, you have Suiki, is for the Nintendo Switch. You also have the Nintendo license seal in the top. You have a Nintendo Japan seal and you can also see Dance at the Go for Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch logo, uh, the operation scheme for it, some information about the controller. You can see that it's for the Nintendo Switch and not for the Nintendo Switch Lite. The scheme of the controller with all the with the lever and all the buttons in it. And on the bottom, <laughs> so Let's start by opening the box. And there you have it. Uh, whoop. You can see that it's only for the Nintendo Switch when play in dock version. Not is not for the Nintendo Switch Lite or for the Nintendo Switch in handheld mode. So we are going to open these flaps and there's uh, some kind of instructions in plastic and another box. Oh, let's see how can we... Oh, all right. So it seems that we have to pull this. Yeah, I'm pulling. Okay, ooh, <laughs> all right. We'll be leaving that over there and there it is, the controller itself. So let's pull it carefully, all right. I'm going to leave it there. So as you can see, there are more Carter to keep the controller in place, in, in place. Sorry. <laughs> um, I have to say that I received the controller from Japan, from Amazon Japan, without any trouble. To the outside or the inside. Um, here we have the cable for it. Cable is also in a plastic box, in a plastic bag. Okay, and there we have it. Careful there. Wow, look at that. Wow. It's a neat piece, all right. Okay. So this is the Dance and Go. Suiki, you can see it again. Suiki. Thank you, Suiki, for producing this controller. And there's a velcro strap on the cable. I think I can just... No, I, I'm going to open it. And, wow, this is a really long cable, like... Okay, th this must be um, two meters or something like that. More than two meters, actually. Some plastic, come on this. Right, 
So this is an official Dance at the Go controller. As you can see, you have the Dance at the Go logo, the new one that was introduced after the 2017 arcade game produced by Suiki and for the Nintendo Switch. And it's really nice. It's really nice to have it in your hands. It has a nice weight to it. And also I really like the finish on the plastic. It's all plastic and there's a different feeling from the base to the handle. It's like a more polished finish in the handle. And this controller is modeled after the current one handle controller in use by JRS. This is the type of controller that you can see in all the train in almost all the trains featuring Dance at the Go Hasido Yamanota Sen. It's modeled after the real thing, but it's smaller in size. The Mamicon, the master controller, is a little smaller and you can see it when you put your hands into it. I hear that? Sounds really nice. <laughs> and this is especially noticeable being a smaller controller when you look at the right hand rest handle that will be like this because the real thing this prong goes all the way to so you can put your whole hand into it while here is more like using your hand like this and also it doesn't have the green button that is used to to start the train in the stations with a slope and speaking about the master controller, the Mascon, one interesting thing is that you get a safe button like in the real thing. So in order to go into the power levels, you need to press the button. If you don't press it, you cannot go into power. This is a safety measure that is in the real thing as is a really good move by Suiki to also include it in the controller because it feels way more realistic this way. And of course you can go into the brake levels and in the end is the emergency brake that as you can see has a little bit of resistance into it. You can go uh, until uh, brake level 8 without going into the emergency brake. You have to push it a little, a little bit more and you get it with a nice click to it. Also you have all the Nintendo Switch buttons in the front. Uh, that's a really good thing because older controllers in the series they only had um, the required buttons for the game so it's a good thing especially, especially if you want to use this controller with um, other train simulation games. It feels so good in your hands and also it feels so good to have a new Dance of the Go controller that, wow! Time now for a little test drive between Sibuya and Meguro on the Yamanote line driving the E235 series that has the exact, exact same type of controller as the Suiki controller. All the doors are closed, safe to depart now. Supat Cinco. And as you can see, the controller sits pretty comfortably on my lap. And we have a 65 speed limit, upcoming 85 speed limit. Dimming the lights now for that E231500 series. Alright, 85 speed limit. And as you can see, once you get some practice, it's really easy to activate the buttons with, with, uh, while keeping your right hand on the rest handle. That's something very useful. Alright, we are approaching Ebisu. We have an upcoming 55 speed limit. There goes the Narita Express. 55 speed limit, upcoming 50 speed limit. And 
some GRE's workers there. There goes the Narita Express. And now we are going to make a stop at Ebisu. And it's great using the one handle controller. Although this stop maybe is not going to be so great, but yeah, the feeling really is. All right, three seconds late, but again, you get a very different feeling using this type of one handle controller compared to the older one handle controllers because they were much bigger than this one since they were designed from two hand one handle controllers. And yeah, it's true that this controller is. A little bit smaller than the real fin, but nonetheless, it's pretty comfortable. And we get an S and an A. Getting ready to depart Ebisu for Meguro Station. It would be great to have a bigger rest handle for sure, but still pretty good. All right, all doors are closed. Safe to depart now. Supat Cinco. Departing in Ebisu Station. And we have a 55 speed limit, upcoming 70 speed limit. And that's out. We are going to have to tune the lab. Oh, some GRE's workers there. Sorry. Upcoming 85 speed limit. I want over the speed limit. Sorry there. Okay, we have an upcoming 80 speed check. the lights for that E235 series. Good there. Upcoming 60 speed limit. The one thing that I really like about this controller is the parking from the stations because you have to release the brakes and then you have to push the button in order to move the train to give power and that's awesome. All right, so let's try to make this stop in Meguro. We're going to be a little late here. But again, a really nice feeling using this controller. Well, okay. <laughs> so that's it. I will pause a longer video using the controller, but for now, yeah, the test drive has been has been awesome. I mean, the feeling with this controller is really different to any other ones that has been released for Dance of the Go games. And yeah, let's continue with the review. Okay, so this is the new Dance of the Go controller. But how does it compare to older than Sadego controllers? Well, let's take a look at it. So what I have here is the first Dan Sadego controller that was released for the PlayStation 1 with the first game. And as you can see, they are of a similar size. I will say that the Suiki controller is heavier than the original controller and you can see they have a similar base and all in all they have a similar size and of course the first controller was modeled after the 
205 series um, two handle controller with the separated power and brake levers and let's move to the um, uh, one of my favorites the one handle controller for the playstation that was released with dance at the go 2 so this one is heavier than the suiki controller i think this one has weight <laughs> and that's why it's way heavier than the suiki controller nonetheless you can see that is bigger in size also the base and although they are both one handle controller very different feeling with this one uh, is based on the um, bigger two hands um, type of one handle controllers <laughs> Although this one only has like a handle and a half in order to access the buttons there. But yeah, you can see the difference right there. If you are right now thinking about one or other one handle controller. And next we are going to move to the Type 2 that was released for the PlayStation 2. Again, the Type 2 controller, very similar in size to the Type 1, I should say. So, whoop, there you have it. Yeah, pretty similar. Weight-wise, um, the Suica controller is heavier than the Type 2 controller. Of course, the Type 2 controller comes with a pedal for the horn that you can add right here and um, again a, a different type of, con of controller this is a two handle and this is one handle because this of course is just a rest handle but you can see the um, difference between these controllers and maybe you have noticed something that is something that i really missing with this controller and that in my mind will have made this kind of the perfect controller and that is that this controller doesn't have a place for the rail pocket what like every other controller before this one has that place for your pocket what um, that's true for the type 2 and of course that's also true for the type 1 controller but that is not true for the Suiki controller there's, there's no place to, to put it and I get it they have added the right hand rest handle they also have all the buttons in here and they wanted to keep it in to a more compact form but again that was kind of a tradition that you had your place to to put your rail pocket what nonetheless this is a magnificent controller i love it uh, so far it has been great playing with it by the way i'm playing on the ps4 but you can very easily play with it using a titan 1 or a titan 2 game device for it so now we've seen how the new suiki controller looks compared to the older controller but what about the sound or more exactly how clicky this new controller is compared to the older controller well let's find out so now i'm going to test the sound of the different controllers i'm using the same mic for all the controllers and first we have the first dance at the go controller the so-called type one let's hear And 
this is the one handle controller released with Dance the Go 2. Let's hear this controller. Here we have the Type 2 controller released for the PlayStation 2. Let's hear this controller. Key controller for the Nintendo Switch. Let's hear how this controller sounds. And that was the sound toss. Honestly, I was surprised about how much clicky the Swiki controller is, like, just hear it. Honestly, I might have a new favorite, but which one was your favorite? Please tell me in the comments down below. One interesting thing is that in the front of the box, it says Dance at the Go dedicated one handle controller, but it doesn't make any reference to Dance at the Go Hashiro Yamanota san. Instead, it's just to Dance at the Go. This means that maybe we are getting more titles in the series. I mean, uh, the controller was released after the releases of the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch versions of Dance at the Go Hashiro Yamanota san. And I bet that Suiki knows a thing or two about future releases by Square Enix Taito. So yeah, maybe, but not saying uh, Hashiro Yamanote-san, they want to future-proof the controller in case we are getting a uh, dance at go Hashiro Osaka Kanjo-san <laughs> or something like that. I don't know, I don't have any info on that, but very interesting nonetheless. So, after reviewing, testing, and comparing it, was my verdict on the controller? Well, as Futaba will say, Sugoi! <laughs> this is an amazing controller. Great job by Suiki producing this controller. I think this is a worthy successor to all the Dance at the Go controllers that were released in the past. And total recommendation to get this controller if you love Dance the Go. I would even recommend this controller for train simulation fans because I think it could be very useful for other train simulation games. And it's just a great piece of hardware for playing with Dance the Go. So yeah, total recommendation. And by the way, if you have enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and tell me in the comments down below if you want to see more reviews of Dance at the Go related hardware. And until the next time, thank you for traveling with the Yamanote and have a nice rest of your trip.